Okay, so we're working our way towards being able to write methods in Unicorn without having to use any of the preset methods that are available to us in the method editor. In order to be able to do this, we have to understand four things more or less at the same time. Those are reading Unicorn syntax, blocks and phases, the Avant flow path, and breakpoints. Today we're going to be looking at the Avant flow path. Here's the physical Avant you know, which I have the business end facing you. And then to the right, I've got a system schematic. And this system schematic is set up more or less the same way as the physical Avant. Down here, I've got the unicorn process picture as it's shown in the systems control module. So you can follow along. Hopefully, um, you know, you can kind of know your way around the system schematic just by looking at it. To start is the Q valve, which is in the middle. And you know, honestly, I don't really use a Q valve, so I'm not gonna uh, talk about this at all today, but I just wanna let you know it's there. So after that, each system has an inlet valve, inlet S, A, and B, which corresponds to a pump, the sample pump, system pump A, and system pump B. Each pump consists of two stainless steel housing housings with a piston inside of each one that goes back and forth and there's a couple check valves on the top and the bottom of each system and you know all of those pump into the the thing on the bottom is a flow restrictor the flow restrictor keeps solutions from flowing back into the system when the system is idle and then a pressure monitor this pressure monitor on top is what's responsible for the system's pressure number that's given to you in the system's control module. The sample pump also has its own pressure monitor. That's a sample pump monitor. Next, the sample pump just goes straight to the flow valve. That's important to remember. But the system pump goes to a mixer. The mixer has different volumes. The current volume you have on your system is engraved on the side. After that, both flow paths meet up at the injection valve. The injection valve has six different possible positions, and this is where the sample loop is located. And there's also a syringe port on there. Next, we have the column valve. The column valve is really neat. It can house five different columns at the same time. And each column can run in both the downflow and upflow positions. After the column valve, we have the UV monitor, which can you know see any UV absorbance from 190 to 700 nanometers, and it can measure three wavelengths at the same time. The conductivity monitor has a built-in temperature sensor and is right after the UV monitor. After that, we have a pH and flow restrictor valve which is very convenient as well. Its default position is with the restrictor on and the pH uh, sensor off. Um, the pH sensor adds, sorry, the flow restrictor adds about 0.25 megapascals. And this depends on, you know, the type of chromatography you're doing, the flow rate you're running at, if you have an Avant 150 or, one, or a 25. After the flow restrictor, we have the outlet valve. The outlet valve has 12 different ports on it. 10 of those ports are just regular outlet valves that you can, you know, direct something towards like a large reservoir. The other two, one of them leads to the fraction collector and the last one goes to waste. The fraction collector inlet is this little tiny hole on the side of the system. It's kind of up and to the left of the outlet valve and a tube goes in there and it goes right underneath the LCD screen and then it goes into the drawer. And so we're just gonna look inside the fraction collector drawer and this is more or less what it looks like. You have the funnel right here that the dispenser head goes into when it's not collecting a fraction. This is the dispenser head right here and um, it's got a outlet nozzle that drips into each of the different fractions when you're collecting fractions. All right, so that's a simple rundown of the flow path. However, I'd like to show you some key points of interest you know, in the flow path, and so we're gonna kinda start over again. And each of the inlet valves has an integrated air sensor. 
and this is really helpful actually. You should have these on for most of your chromatography runs. The A and B air sensor is really helpful for protecting the column. The S air sensor is helpful for telling the system when your sample is being loaded, if that's how you're loading your sample using the sample pump. After that, the mixer has an inline filter in it, which is kind of hidden in the mixer cap. A lot of people I know never even change the inline filter. You should regularly change the filter. If you're not, you probably don't even need the inline filter, especially if you filter your buffers and samples before you actually put them on the system and run them over your columns. Check on that if you haven't ever. It can cause a lot of back pressure, the inline filter. It's also important to remember that the um, system pump has the um, the filter, I'm uh, sorry, has the mixer anyways. You know, if you're loading your sample through the system um, pump, then, you know, you're gonna end up getting some band broadening because the, you know, volume of whatever the mixing chamber is. The sample pump just bypasses it. Okay, so the injection valve has six different positions, but some of those positions have the same plumbing. You can see this, uh, the sample, uh, sorry, the system pump waste and the direct inject positions are the exact same. Same with inject and sample pump waste. The default position, manual load, uh, does not allow you to run the sample pump and the system pump at the same time. Other positions, like sample pump waste, will allow you to run them both at the same time. All right, so the column valve has an internal pressure sensor on the inlet and outlet side. This is what gives you your column pressure like difference, your delta column pressure. Then after that, the fraction collector with the dispenser head has a code reader. The code reader reads the code on the rack this is how the system can tell the difference between, say, a 96 well plate rack and a 15 mil conical tube rack. Um, the code reader can also sense whether a 96 well plate is there. It can't tell you whether fractions are there or not, though, for conical tubes. The accumulator uh, sometimes can get stuck. It's like a little piston inside the fraction collector dispenser head. Um, and you know, it's designed to be able to hold the liquid as the dispenser head is moving, say from rack to rack or um, fraction to fraction. So wash your accumulator. The instruction for it is in the fraction collector um, radio button. That's it, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please make a comment below.